HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll fill you in on this week's Planning Board and Board of Selectmen meetings. We have highlights from Hiller Boys Basketball Senior Night and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. This past Monday, the Hopkinton Women's Club made Valentine's Day care bags for the Serenity House after their monthly meeting. The Women's Club, every Valentine's Day, um, honors the, the women that are there uh, with a Valentine special. And so we get cosmetics and, and lotions and various little items and give them a Valentine surprise. So that is our philanthropic uh, uh, February gift. Yeah, could you just talk about some of the items that are going into the bags? Oh, we have soaps, toothpaste, lotions, some candy, Kleenex, um, and vari oh, various other little surprises. Safewise.com has ranked Hopkinton as the third safest community in Massachusetts. Franklin was ranked first and Shrewsbury second. The Safewise study indicated that Hopkinton had only 0.12 violent crimes per 1,000 people, which essentially means one per every 12,000 people, and property crimes were at 3.77 per 1,000 people. The study indicated that statewide violent crime rate is 20% lower than the national average and property crime rate is 46% lower than the national average. Hopkinton was ranked fifth safest in last year's SafeWise study and moves two spots up to number three on the list. The Hopkinton girls indoor track team qualified for nationals by finishing fourth at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. This photo was shared on Twitter by the Hopkinton girls cross country track account. You can follow them at HopGirlsXC. The Planning Board and Board of Selectmen met this week. Here's a look at this week's meetings. On Tuesday, February 13th, the Board of Selectmen meeting took place at the HCAM studios. The Selectmen accepted an ambulance fund gift in memory of Fire Chief Richard J. McMillan. Richard, commonly referred to as Rick McMillan, was a veteran of the U.S. Army and served the Hopkinton Fire Department for 35 years including serving as chief. I'm proud to talk about this. So obviously we talked about Chief McMillan passing away at our last meeting. <clears throat> he was a great guy, great guy for the town, and uh, a pioneer in the, in the fire service, not just the fire department, but in, pirate, in the fire service. So uh, it's not surprising to see all, these, all this uh, sh uh, show of gratuity for all the hard work selflessly that the chief did for years and years and years here. It's, it's nice that uh, you know, we can benefit, unfortunately it's posthumously, but it's nice that we can benefit as a department from people's generosity. So thank you very much and it's a, it's a, a great charity that these, some of these people are choosing at the end of their lives and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us get our department uh, you know, further its training and its professionalism to be safe and secure moving forward. So it's a, it's a great gift. Thank you. If I may, I just want to take a minute um, because the list, the list is just huge and it represents over a thousand dollars in contributions and um, <clears throat> I just want to recognize by name 
<coughs> the contributors, the Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, Patricia Aspinwall, Paul Phipps Insurance, James Bartlett, Timothy Clifford and Eleanor Arsenal, Townsend Yacht Club, Linda Rosener and um, M. Teresa Goodale, Russell Ellsworth and Mary Ellsworth, Deborah Bent, Nancy DeWolf, Judith Keefe, Charlotte Colella, John and Ruth Knowles, Francis and Phyllis Pine, James and Patricia Parker, Janet E. Ray, and Henry Boroyan. Um, and as I said, this group of people has already, has contributed over $1,000, and those contributions just keep growing in, so I think it's, it's worth uh, giving them personal thanks. The Board of Selectmen also heard from IT Department and School Committee regarding the 2019 budget requests. The Information Technology Department has three items submitted um, for capital expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, the first was originally submitted for $45,500, which was for town hall security upgrades. Um, since the original submission, this capital item has been uh, adjusted down from uh, comprising of three sub-projects, uh, eliminating two of those projects, putting those on hold uh, potentially for a future year. Uh, that brings the cost to $20,000, which allows for key card access to be added to all exterior doors at Town Hall um, and combining that into the existing card access control system uh, that exists at the police station, library, and DPW. What's being pushed out? Um, we had also originally recommended one camera, one external camera, um, be mounted externally on the building, external door, um, to monitor each of the exterior doors. And we also originally recommended internal wiring to be run to internal doors that we thought um, in the future may be recommended to also add interior card access. Um, the primary reason that we were recommending the internal wiring at this point um, was because the walls are already opened up um, due to the water damage prior to putting the sheetrock up. Um, we'd be able to recognize a, a savings running yeah. those wires now as, a, as opposed to in the future. Yeah, and so what kind of savings would we would we be looking at? What's what are the prices and the price differences? Um, so it, it, it it's hard to say roughly. exactly, yeah. but um, yeah. roughly by doing that wiring now, we'd be looking at um, a range of approximately eight thousand to ten thousand dollars, and we believe that by doing that once the drywall was up, we'd be looking at a premium of roughly seven to eight thousand dollars. On top of that, if we're, if we're not going to be in town hall for fiscal year nineteen. We're not going to be in there by then. If, if we're not, a lot of stuff that we can. If we're not going to be putting drywall up at all during fiscal year 19, that is a signal to me that that building needs so much work that we should be getting rid of it. Honestly, we still expect to be back in town hall uh, by May of this year. As of right now, if you were town hall, you'd have seen lots of people coming in and out of the building. We have electricians already working. Uh, we expect the, the drywalling uh, uh, companies to come in uh, as early as next week. So work is going on. If, if, you, if you were a town hall this week, you, you, you would have noticed. The school committee also talked about their budget requests, including the proposed artificial turf fields at the high school. Um, but as a reminder, we do have $1.7 million from CPC. We're in the process of securing um, community funding. In fact, right now in a different meeting in a different part of town, we're um, engaging a group to manage um, some kind of a GoFundMe-like campaign. And we have been working to identify some, um, some sponsors as well. So we actually didn't have a quorum at our last turf field subcommittee meeting, but we were going to discuss having a goal of at least $500,000 in community funds to raise towards this project as well so all of that is ongoing and um, as soon as we know what the final cost will be we will reach out to um, town hall so we can get an actual tax impact and then we'll really know what what we're talking about in terms of the dollar amount as well as if it's going to impact FY19 or FY20. 
To see the full Selectman meeting, head over to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. The planning board was unable to vote on Whisper Ridge due to a couple members missing, but the board did take a vote on the Saddle Hill Road project. So, um, this is for a stormwater management permit um, submitted to the board pursuant to Chapter 172, stormwater management erosion control, majority vote is required. Um, we've endorsed a, an ANR plan for five lots, but we now know it's up to 11 lots. Um, and there's also the issue of a, a scenic road permit, um, which has already been issued. Okay, so we've uh, we voted to add those four conditions. So now we're going to take our second and hopefully final vote for um, all ten conditions. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve with conditions that we've listed. Uh, modifications or restrictions which will ensure that the project meets the standards and adequately protects water resources. There a second? Second. Second. Is second. that one of the specific choices? Is that what you were reading? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Great. But yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure we weren't freewheeling. So, any further discussion? Um, so, just to, to highlight the six standard conditions plus the four conditions, I'll spell them out now: a stormwater prevention plan, um, a homeowners association, and operations maintenance plan review, uh, town, town official inspecting soil conditions, and an as-built plan. Does that sound fair, Elaine? Those, you have those four mm -hmm. extras and details of those? So I see we're ready for a vote. Yep. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, those abstained, so carries. You can also see the full planning board meeting on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll take you to Hiller Boys Basketball Senior Night. We have the latest in Hiller sports, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more on the way. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hi, my name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history, we're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices, and we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Hiller boys basketball team hosted senior night festivities this past week prior to their game with Dedham. Here is a look at the Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team as they recognize their seniors. Okay, I'd like to um, get started with some of our senior night festivities. And first off, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for a great year. I'd like to thank the student body that came out and supported us all year. I'd like to thank the cheerleaders. I'd like to definitely thank the uh, pep band. They brought a great element to the game this year. You can give them a round of applause, sure. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody from Dedham. Welcome to the league. I think you'll find that it's a fantastic league. Congratulations on a wonderful season. Hats off to you. And now we'd like to recognize the senior cheerleaders, the senior manager, and the senior boys varsity basketball players who have been a part of the basketball program over the past four years. So we're going to start uh, with the cheerleaders. Hi, everyone. I'd just like to reiterate all the thank yous that Coach Keen gave. Um, great job to the boys basketball team this season. Um, thank you for having us and letting us cheer for you. Um, we'll start with our senior captain, Riley Myers. Thank you. She's walking out with her mom, Molly, and her father, Kevin. Can you give me a hug? Leave her mom and dad. Ryan, look. Look. And 
and we're going to have our other senior captain, Lisa Breton, accompanied by her mom, Nancy, and brother, Patrick. We'd now like to take the time to recognize our senior manager, Cam Hutchins, with his parents, Stacy and John, his sister, Hannah, and his grandmother, Nancy. Now for our senior boys varsity basketball players. First up is senior captain Tommy Leone accompanied by his parents, Wendy and Jerry. Next up is senior captain Michael Ionelli, accompanied by his parents Kelly and David, sister Hannah, Jesse, and brother Jack. Finally, senior captain Zach Sasitsky, accompanied by his parents Abby and Rich, his brother Evan, and grandfather Irv. Irv is 88 years old tonight. Happy birthday, Irv. Hey, thank you very much. We're going to finish up warm-ups, and uh, I hope everybody enjoys the game. Believe it or not, we are in the final two weeks of the winter sports regular season, and just about all Hiller teams are in the running or have clinched a postseason spot. Here is a look at the latest Hopkinton Hillers highlights. The Hopkinton Hillers Alpine ski team sent six athletes to the state championship which will take place March 6th. Below is a look at the team photo. The Hillers ski team has 20 athletes in total, 18 boys and two girls. The boys finished fifth place overall out of 12 teams. The top 20 girls and top 24 boys in the league qualified for the state finals. Representatives in the finals from the Hillers include both the girl members of the team, Allison Marr, who's ranked fourth, and Kate Barry, who's ranked sixth. For the boys, Max Rogers ranked 13th, Jordan Hanna ranked 20th, Jackson Schlussel ranked 23rd, and Kyle Perkins ranked 24th. Congratulations to head coach Nancy Schlussel, assistant coach Dan Barry, and the Hillers Alpine ski team on a terrific second season. On Wednesday, the Hillers boys hockey team took on Medway with the TVL title on the line. 
The Hillers drew first blood with 11.41 left in the first period. Hunter Temple with a beauty of a pass to Will Abbott, and it gave the Hillers a 1-0 lead. Back to the blue line now. Saparoshik shots diverted by Anderson. Out in front, and that's a goal! It looks like Will Abbott was able to put that one in. Nice pass by Hunter Temple. Behind the net, just waited for Abbott to cut in. And for Abbott, that's a, that's a sends a streak to 13 straight games, Tom. He's been on fire all season. 11.41 left to go in the first period. A beauty of a pass by Hunter Temple leads to a Will Abbott goal. That one nothing lead would stand all the way until 5.15 in the third period, where Will Abbott finds DJ Sloan. Except for the hill, but Lanou came up big. Abbott. And Simon was trying to put it back towards Abbott. Sloan with possession. Here comes Sloan. Up the near side. Trying to leave that one. Out in front, that's a goal! DJ Sloan handling that one. He did not have much room to put that, but he put it right where it had to go. Medway thought that he was going to go to Abbott, but Sloan had him all fooled, and he was able to risk that one right in past Lanou to make it two to nothing, Hillers. Five minutes, 15 seconds left in the third period, and the Hillers can smell the TVL title. The goal made it two to nothing, and that's how it would stay as the Hopkinton Hillers improved to 15-2 and one, and officially clinched the TVL title. Medway is now 12 and six on the season. Dylan O'Leary was fantastic in net. He racked up 31 saves overall and captured his seventh shutout of the season. Dylan O'Leary has an outstanding 94% save rate this year. Will Abbott now has 26 goals and 16 assists overall for a whopping 42 points on the season. And DJ Sloan now at 27 points on the year. On senior night, the Hopkinton boys basketball team took care of business versus Dedham. Junior guards Ryan Kester and Ben McKenzie each put up 15 points. Michael Povacod chipped in with 10, and Tommy Ambrosoni put up 8 points and 8 assists as the Hillers cruised past Dedham 66-46. The Hillers boys played a makeup game in Westwood on Thursday and fell 57-52 in a good battle. The playoff bound Hillers now stand at 11-8 overall heading in to the final week of regular season play. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, February 16th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with author Meredith O'Brien on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. How do you go about, okay, what, what makes you think about the ne what the next project ought to be, and if it should be fiction or nonfiction or... It's, yeah. it's not, I have a mil uh, notebooks of ideas, and oh, I just okay. write them down, or things in the news, or thing that, things that might inspire me to write maybe a short piece or a, a longer piece, and before I decide what I'm going to plunge into it needs to really grab me. I need to yes. be able to see it through and imagine the mm -hmm. writing process and how long it would take and whether or not it would be interesting to anybody else to read. Right. On Monday, February 19th at 8.30 p.m., Dr. Michael Greedy gives a straight talk on pain medications and the opioid epidemic on a new episode of Physician Focus. Sure. Uh, is there a way in which I could get just a part of my prescription filled? Absolutely, and that is your right as a patient. So if you were to come in and say, um, the prescription was written for, I don't know, maybe 30 tablets and you feel that 15 is adequate for you, you can ask the pharmacist uh, to fill it for the 15. On Tuesday, February 20th at 7 p.m., the town gathers in a public forum to discuss the reuse of the center school building in a brand new HCAM TV special. On Wednesday, February 21st at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of the Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. 
Tune in and join the conversation. On Friday, February 23rd at 5 p.m., award-winning singer and songwriter Kate Chadbourne performs her music on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And on HCAM Ed, the Hillers vs. Bellingham ice hockey game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. This past Monday, the Hopkinton Women's Club made Valentine's Day care bags for the Serenity House after their monthly meeting. The Women's Club, every Valentine's Day, um, honors the, the women that are there uh, with a Valentine special. And so we get cosmetics and, and lotions and various little items and give them a Valentine surprise. So that is our philanthropic uh, uh, February gift. Yeah, can you just talk about some of the items that are going into the bags? Oh, we have soaps, toothpaste, lotions, some candy, Kleenex, um, and very, oh, 